we should always keep in mind that the Buddha's first description of the path that he taught was the middle way between two extremes. Because it's the middle way, it requires discernment. In fact, finding what exactly is the middle is what exercises our discernment. If the path were simply a matter of pushing and pushing and pushing all the time, or of being passively accepting all the time, it wouldn't require much discernment at all. You would just do whatever had to be done, or keep on doing and doing and doing, or being accepting, accepting, accepting. It would be kind of a one-note path. But here we have eight factors. And each of them is supposed to be right. As John Fuhrman pointed out often, right view all the way through right concentration means just right view, just right concentration. And finding that point of just right requires that you use your powers of observation. And not only that, you have to use your ingenuity, because sometimes the point of just right doesn't lie halfway between two extremes. It lies outside of the continuum. And sometimes just right might lean toward one extreme or another at any particular time. And you have to read the situation. That's why you have to be observant, to see what is needed. And right now you're trying to focus on the breath. Several questions come in. One. What kind of breath is just right for you just now? This means just right for the body, in the sense that it feels good breathing in, feels good breathing out. Just right for the mind. It's not too light to detect, it's not too heavy, so that it gets burdensome. So you've got to adjust things, and then observe, and then adjust again, and observe. And when you get something that's good, stick with it for a while. You can stop the adjusting then. And see how long you can stay with that kind of breathing, that kind of focus. Because the strength of your focus is also an issue. The Buddha's an analogy is of a baby chick you're trying to hold in your hand. If you squeeze it too tightly, it's going to die. If you hold it too loosely, it's going to fly away. So you have to hold just the right amount of pressure on the chick, just the right amount of pressure on the spot where you're focused. And then try to maintain that. Like a person crossing a tightrope or a surfer riding a wave, it will require some adjustments here and there. This is a matter of learning how to read the situation and then doing what is required. This is why, as I said, the two words that John Fung used most in his instructions were be observant and use your ingenuity. This is why John Lee put so much emphasis on evaluation, evaluating the breath, and then when the breath gets good, evaluating what you're going to do with the pleasure you get from the breath. In other words, you don't want to just wallow in the pleasure. You want to use it as a tool to create a place in the body where it's easy to settle down, pleasant to settle down, where you feel enveloped in good energy, enveloped in a sense of, of rapture and pleasure. Rapture sometimes is not all that strong, it might be just a refreshment, but it feels good. You want that to be all around, so you can sit down and settle into the body, not feel like you're pushed off to one side and ready to totter and fall off. You're here in the midst of a good energy. Now, as you're evaluating, you'll find that there are some things you can adjust and others that you can't. There will be some spots in the body that respond to good breath energy and other spots that don't. And dealing with these is like dealing with issues outside. And those when you're dealing with other people, you have to figure out which battles are worth fighting and which ones are not. Where do you have to stand your ground and where do you have to to give. And again, this requires your discernment. There's sometimes when you work with a particular pain or a particular blockage in the body and you really do get results. 
The problem is that sometimes those results may come slowly, so it takes a while for you to realize whether what you're doing really is having an impact or not. But if you see that after a while nothing is happening, it's okay. you just got to work around it. Breathe around the blockage as you spread your awareness to fill the body. Let that part sort of be outside the range of your awareness. In other words, you make the most of what you've got, but you've got to test things for a while. So you can gain your own sensitivity to when it's right to push and when it's right to just accept. And when the effort that's required is strong effort and whether it's just gentle effort. As Buddha said, there's some causes of suffering that all you have to do is look at them and they go away. Those are the kinds that survive in the mind because you're not looking, not paying much attention to them. But as soon as you notice them, you realize this is ridiculous, and you can drop it. There are other causes of suffering that just stare right back at you. They're going to stay right there. And those are the ones that require, that require a lot of work, what the Buddha calls exerting a fabrication. In other words, you have to work with the breath, work with the way you're talking to yourself about the issue. Look at the perceptions you hold around the issue to see maybe whether the perceptions are part of the problem, whether you can change those perceptions. Like if you find yourself running up against anger, you have to ask yourself, well, what is the perception you're holding that's giving the anger a foothold in your mind? What is it about the anger that you find appealing? Why do you like getting angry? Why do you like getting negative? What's the allure? And you look around and ask a few questions, and after all, you un uncover that there is something about this that you really enjoy. But then you begin to realize it's a really miserable enjoyment. And when you can see the drawbacks, compare them with the allure. And you can do this with a sense of fairness, and it's a lot easier to let go of that particular cause. So the middle way doesn't mean just middling everything, middling effort, middling concentration, middling breath. You want an extremely good breath if you can. You want your concentration to be really, really still. But to get there requires a sense of balance, which times you have to be on the offense, and which times you have to be on the defense, which times you have to be active, and which times you have to be accepting and passive, which times you have to meddle with things, which times you just have to let them go. You learn this with practice. This is why we have to practice again and again and again, because we have to develop our own sensitivity to things. So we have a feeling of just right, and you settle down. And you begin to know more and more instinctively what's just right for you right now, what the body needs right now, what the mind needs right now. It's in this way that your concentration becomes just right, and the other elements of the path, the other factors of the path become just right as well. But it requires a lot of discernment. This is why in every description of the path, discernment is necessary. And why all the teachers talk about how discernment is what makes all the difference. And it's not just the discernment that comes at the end of the path. You have to exercise it all along the way as you figure out what's just right right now. Where to be more assertive, where to be more quiet. You've got to read the situation. And as you do, you develop your sensitivity, and it's that sensitivity that becomes your discernment. It's not just a matter of reading things in books. This is one of the reasons why John Lee makes the mastery of a skill his main image for the practice. It's through doing things and then reading the results of what you've done and then making adjustments that the path progresses.
This is why his, evalu his explanation of jhana places so much emphasis on the evaluation of the breath, because that's what you're doing. That's why when he talks about mindfulness practice, he places so much emphasis on the fact that it's your ardency that gives rise to the discernment. In other words, your attempts to do things right, you put your whole heart in trying to do it right. That means you also have to read the results you get to make sure they really are right and to make adjustments. So you put your whole heart in. You don't put it in only in a middling way. But that means you have to become very, very sensitive to what you're doing and the results that you get and adjust things accordingly. 